Gold Arcades, I'm Kari, the Vacuum Chip Witch, and today we've got something that I got uh, from uh, from someone uh, who wanted <coughs> to get rid of uh, a lot of uh, antique stuff and had an uh, amplifier for repair. So I got uh, a load of uh, rheostats and uh, needle meters in exchange for fixing his amplifier. And want to know what's in the box? We'll see to the bench. So this is a box full of old uh, industrial uh, rheostats. Uh, a rheostat is a uh, potentiometer, wire wand, uh, usually usually for high powers. This one uh, it's marked uh, R75 <coughs> which, uh, which means that uh, it's probably 75 watts But this is not the largest one that I have. R1 110K. <laughs> this is just magnificent. Why you want uh, industrial uh, grade? Uh, those uh, those things were used uh, in uh, control circuits of uh, of some machines because um, the donor worked in uh, in the woodworking or carpentry industry and i think that uh, those are factory stocks uh, of uh, spare parts for the machines another 100 watt uh, rheostat A little bit squeaky, <coughs> but beautifully built. Uh, it's made of ceramic and uh, and metal, all connected with screws, with uh, diecast uh, aluminum uh, frame. Seventy-five. It's covered in sawdust, uh, also uh, having something to do with uh, the origin of uh, the, um, the parts. Soldering logs, um, those were not used. Brand new. 1991. It's uh, way newer than I thought. This one uh, would be from 1978. German production, uh, 77, 850 ohms. And that's both the smallest size in this collection, 20 watts. No date code on this thing, but uh, it's the same uh, factory. <coughs> and here we have uh, different type of uh, of real set of potentiometer and those have uh, screw contacts uh, 5k 10k uh, 10k again uh, this one is also 10k if i turn the the shaft uh, the wiper slides uh, on the the wire wand uh, resistive path and uh, this model uh, has a scale to denote um, 
the end goal. It's slightly off, uh, slightly twisted. Zero plus thirty, sixty, ninety, etc. Minus thirty, sixty, ninety, etc. It has screw contacts. It has a plaque uh, with a uh, serial number, and this is mine, made by Fernsteuergeräte, which means uh, remote control devices. I also have a lot of beautiful knobs uh, for those rheostats. But uh, they have one issue that uh, the shaft diameters uh, do match uh, the large uh, 100 watt uh, rheostat. But not the smaller ones. And I would have to use an adapter to get them uh, to work with. Uh, with smaller real stats and potentiometers. And I also have uh, double gain the good uh, real stat. Brand new, not ever soldered, uh, damaged in transport, unfortunately. 50k plus uh, 4k7, also from Fernsteuer Geräte. Made in Germany. Real deal vintage stuff. And also the the two Rio Rio stats. Uh, one uh, 2K2 and uh, the other one 390 ohms. 1992 WM uh, R40, so this would mean that uh, both parts uh, can handle 40 watts uh, of power. And also uh, the cover on this thing is transparent. With a uh, scale in uh, percents of uh, of the path uh, and of the resistance. Physically, a rheostat is linear because um, if you wanted to make a uh, logarithmic or exponential rheostat, you would have to use uh, a uh, changing thickness of, uh, of the resistive wire. And that's uh, that's almost impossible to make. So uh, real stats were exclusively linear when it comes to the the characteristic. Um, unlike uh, unlike uh, audio potentiometers, I also have one of those uh, one of those real stats uh, was damaged. And uh, this would be a perfect opportunity to do a teardown of this thing. <coughs> so we've got one on the bench. And let's zoom on in. And with the screwdriver of truth, let's take it apart. It's quite dirty. But I can uh, unscrew the wiper first. And the wiper has a metal contact uh, sliding over the resistive path. Mm, 
this has seen uh, quite some use. Uh, it was covered in uh, in dust. Of course, it worked in uh, unfavorable conditions. And there's also uh, another sliding contacts uh, right here that make uh, make contact with this um, metal ring that was attached um, by three screws and I will undo the third one it was attached to a uh, ceramic insulator and uh, this whole block uh, with uh, with bearings uh, for the shaft it is connected uh, by means of uh, three screws with uh, the ceramic uh, part with the resistive wire And the screw terminals can also be detached. The bearing has a retainer ring on uh, on this uh, side of uh, the shaft. Uh, and this means that I could liberate the ring to get the the axle the shaft out and there is a limiter that uh, engages with uh, this block can't uh, turn uh, too much uh, so that would be the extreme positions on the, on this uh, rheostat and it can be discombobulated a little bit further there is a nut, a lock nut and a washer and there is also a uh, phenolic or paper washer preventing damage uh, to the ceramic part and the ceramic part has an uh, oval uh, hole in it um, to prevent uh, the shaft from uh, turning in uh, in respect uh, to the ceramic shaft and uh, the limiter can also be taken off so that would be the almost complete teardown of uh, the rheostat I can take it apart just a teeny tiny bit more That's uh, the connection block, very sturdy, industrial grade, and the ceramic uh, part uh, has uh, special notches uh, preventing those uh, connection blocks uh, from 
moving to the sides. And this should be connected somehow with the resistive path. The connection is actually very primitive. If you take a closer look here, it's just a end piece of uh, resistive wire wrapped uh, around uh, the the screw just uh, between the sheet metal part uh, and the screw terminal. Very simple, but uh, reliable enough. Same thing on this side as well. And that would be a complete teardown of a rheostat. Thing of beauty, joy forever. Almost indestructible. This one was damaged, but... It was a, uh, it was uh, some fun time uh, taking it apart. Oh damn it! Isn't it bright outside now? <laughs> the the sun has just come out. So that would be a bunch of old rheostats, and uh, that's what I have for you today. See you next time, stay determined and carry on.